when we look at the coronavirus, we are now familiar that it has these things called spike proteins on its outer surface, as well as an actual component of it that contains the virus's genetic material, the RNA. And so what happens is when this virus comes into contact with the host cell, one of the spike proteins will contact something referred to as an ACE2 receptor on a host cell. There's gonna be some kind of conformational change and then the genetic material inside of this virus is gonna get injected into this host and then that host cell will have its machinery hijacked and basically turn into this virus making factories to make a bunch of coronaviruses. So one host cell that gets infected can churn out a million or more coronaviruses that will go on to affect even more cells. So this is extremely fast growth. And so the question is, how do you fight this? And so one method that we're currently working on is referred to as mRNA uh, vaccines. And so essentially what we need to think of for mRNA is it is information. It is how biomolecules are able to tell each other how to make something, how to make a protein. And so most of the physical things that make up the actual coronavirus are just proteins. They were coded for by RNA. And so because the Chinese researchers were able to fully sequence all of the genome of the coronavirus and they were able to also identify the genes that code for the actual spike proteins that are on that coronavirus. Uh, they were able to isolate the RNA and I will represent the RNA with this little silver dot right here. And so what they are currently doing in phase one clinical trials is administering the RNA to patients who have the coronavirus. And the thought is that this RNA will go into some kind of antigen presenting cell. And these antigen presenting cells are part of your immune system. And so once the information to make the actual bad guy proteins, the spike proteins, are encoded and given to the immune cell, the antigen presenting cell, the antigen presenting cell will begin to actually make the bad guy proteins on its surface. And we'll display the proteins like this. And so I like to think of your immune system as kind of like a police station. And so what you've done essentially is you can kind of think of this as like a sketch of the bad guy. And then the actual spike protein is like the actual kind of a, a statue or a figure of the bad guy. And so what this antigen presenting cell does is it's able to now make statues of this bad guy. And it goes back to this police station, which I like to think of as lymph nodes. And in your lymph nodes, you've got other types of immune cells like B cells that make your antibodies, as well as T cells that are involved in regulating your immune response and also checking up on cells to make sure they're not doing anything bad either. And so inside the lymph node, your antigen presenting cell that had the RNA given to it that coded for the bad guy proteins that were on your coronavirus is gonna come in and it's gonna basically show everyone, this is what bad guy, this is not good. And so while your antigen presenting cell is in your lymph node, you'll have B cells come by, they'll feel it, and the B cells are responsible for making antibodies, which are these little green dots I'm representing here. And so with these antibodies, you're gonna be able to get a nice way of identifying and blocking the coronavirus from infecting cells and as also for killing it. And then your T cells, are gonna look at the bad guy statue that's given to it by this antigen presenting cell. And with this bad guy statue, they're able to recognize which cells have been infected and then kill them. And that's the job of cytotoxic T cells. And so once you've got the sketch of the bad guy, as well as a little statue of the bad guy or a key, key feature of the bad guy, your immune system is basically able to learn how to recognize and kill the bad guys so that when you are exposed to the real coronavirus, your immune system has a much better chance of being able to fight off the disease, COVID-19, and save your life. And so all of this is great news for helping patients get the best chance of survival they can from infections. Um, it is currently in phase one trials, and this is something that getting out of phase one uh, typically takes some time. For the case of COVID-19, they do want to push it through so they're making this a six-week uh, clinical trial. And I believe we're about three weeks currently into 
the phase one clinical trial for this. This is to demonstrate whether or not the actual RNA therapy is going to be toxic because the last thing we want to do is just give someone a drug that ends up killing them and not even helping them. So right now we're just establishing to make sure this stuff isn't toxic. And then after it's been established that this therapy is not toxic or immunogenic, the next step here is going to be proving that it actually works. And so in the efficacy trials, the phase two trials, that's where we're going to start enrolling larger numbers of patients to see how well this works in practice. Because in theory, all of this stuff makes sense. And this is one cool way that I think researchers and scientists are currently fighting COVID-19. I hope this stuff is interesting to you guys. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you all for watching. Also, please make sure to wash your hands and stay safe.